Pisces, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here. So these readings are readings that are trying to look at your finances, your career, but mainly it's more of a spiritual thing. It's uh, looking at the attitudes that either increase the likelihood of something happening or that push these um, things that push abundance away. And so I created um, affirmations for each of the signs and I <laughs> I wrote down about half of the signs and, and I haven't gotten to you. So let me think of one right now. I use my creative power being ruled by Neptune to bring into my reality that which I desire and I'm you know these are affirmations that go along with your particular sun sign when I talk about Neptune for Pisces Neptune can be a visionary or it can be an influence that is deluding a person that is actually confusing their aim or aims and telling them they want one thing when really they want another. So it's very important for you Pisces to get your ideas really clear so that you know exactly what it is that you want to go for. Sometimes you can have these vague yearnings and not really be able to put your finger on what it exactly it is that you're looking for. Um, the symbol of the, the fish or Pisces are two fish swimming in opposite directions because you may have these thoughts in your head about what it is that you want but you don't think that they really can happen on earth because they're just so magical. And bringing that magic to earth is really your ultimate goal, I would say, even though it is, it can be quite a challenge. One thing I just wanted to tell you is that your ruler, Neptune, is going direct on November 22nd. So perhaps that can help with you being much more in the right direction. Uh, in terms of what it is that you're trying to manifest, you have Neptune in your own sign and will for years to come. But in November, a whole bunch of planets or energy is in one sector, your ninth house. At the time of the new moon in Scorpio, you're going to have the sun there, the moon there, Venus, which can bring money and a lot of harmony, ease to the ninth house and also Jupiter and Jupiter can also be this lucky um, influence actually Jupiter rules this house in the sign of Sagittarius in the universal chart so Jupiter likes to be in the ninth house and the ninth house is the house of the higher mind so whether you're talking about intellectual pursuits like u university level learning or your personal philosophy, whether it's just like philosophy, philosophy, or spiritual philosophy, because this could be, this is the God house, and also the house of long distance travel, as well as publishing for those people who write. All of these things can be featured, and there can be new beginnings, some kind of a, maybe a breakthrough, or some lucky break, I guess is what I, I meant to say, that, you know, establishes you and gets you going in a certain way. And the other thing that is happening, and this is starting in November, is that the sun is going to go after that new moon, which is at a late degree of Scorpio. The sun, a few days later, is going to go into Sagittarius. 
<clears throat> I believe it's on the 21st and um, of November. And so the sun is in your 10th house of career. And this can be a time when you feel very optimistic about whatever it is that your aim is. You may feel like you are being honored in some way, that you are being respected because of your accomplishments. And in December, you have a new moon here on December 18th. So this could be some new beginning. You have, um, you've been having, um, oh, <laughs> I said Scorpio, I, I meant Saturn, in Sagittarius for the last two and a half years. And this is the natural house for Saturn. So I'm curious how many Pisces people have felt that they have really established themselves career-wise. So this new moon in December, on December 18th, can be a culmination of sorts where some things that you have worked hard for are kind of um, being wrapped up. And now you have Saturn going into your 11th house. And Saturn in the 11th house is, is really good for those kinds of dreams, hopes and wishes that you have been just um, dreaming about for many years. And because Saturn is the sign of old age, so it tends to delay what the gratification. But in this sector, which is the luckiest house, it could give you that thing that you've been wanting for quite a long time. This is an influence for the next two and a half years. So it's about long range goals and also networking, friendships. So you may see that some of your friendships are whittled down if they're no longer serving your life. And you may feel like your social circle is a, a, a lot smaller, but what will remain is something quality. And that can actually help you because it can deal with networking. So if you're somebody who has your own business or aspires to have one, this can give you solid um, go-to people that you can use to kind of get the word out about whatever it is that you're doing. And in the long run, they will help you much more than just people that um, may not be even good for you in some way. So that can actually really, I think that can, that can really help you uh, because some of these people might even be older people. As I said, Saturn is about age. And um, so the friendships could be with like, it's almost like a mentor relationship where you're picking their brain or they're, they're helping you to support you in whatever it is that you're endeavoring to do. Okay, so I'm picking a few cards. Um, one, I'm going to shuffle this right now. This is from the Keepers of the Light Oracle. <clears throat> Gaia Earth Connection. And then two are Earth related cards, the Native Spirit deck and the Earth Magic deck. So this is the Native Spirit deck. Hmm. Owl Medicine. Interesting. This is Earth Magic. I just got this for for um, Aquarius, and um, I did shuffle the cards, so that's pretty funny. Okay, let me start with Volcano. And by the way, what I found out when I was started reading this, you see the face in there? It's a woman's face, and I think there's another face that she's <clears throat> kissing or something. <laughs> let me see.
Pele is the goddess who lives on the big island of Hawaii, dwelling there in the craters of the active volcano Kilauea. She is considered passionate, volatile, and capricious, and perhaps the best known of the Penelope <laughs> Penel Penel I, I said Penelope, but I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, of maybe like Pantheon of Hawaiian deities. Since 1983, she has been sending ribbons of lava down the mountainside and into the sea, thereby creating new land. In this image, we see her subtle vis visage in the spewing fire of the volcano. In ancient Hawaiian chants, Pele is described as she who shapes the sacred land. And it's from this magnificent and powerful goddess being and her periodic eruptions that new earth is formed as the resulting lava merges with her sister, the goddess of the sea, Namakahokahai. This is a particularly volatile time for you. Unexpected changes, sometimes quite sudden and dramatic, are occurring in ways that you have absolutely no control over. These occurrences may be so powerful as to shake up what you formerly thought of as the foundations of your security. They may even cause you to reassess the direction your life is taking, to question some of your relationships, or to reevaluate the work you have chosen. Although these events may rock your world, know that spirit is the guiding force behind them. It is a matter of finding your trust that life knows what it is doing and in the midst of these storms and changes, of uh, storms of change. It also requires you to make adjustments quickly and not to cling to what was, but instead move forward and welcome with your arms wide open what is yet to come. All from a place of being present in this moment. You truly have nothing to fear. And it's interesting, I was trying to connect the dots between Aquarius and Pisces both getting this card. And you did have, at the beginning of this year, in February, a solar eclipse. And uh, so you, like Aquarius, had an eclipse this year. And eclipses bring change, and they, they can be long-lasting influences. And obviously, the lesson or the, the teaching is to be open to this change. And I think that Pisces people are. The, the main thing I think for Pisces is to really believe in your ability to take inspired action and not to just um, allow the outside world to be what changes you, to be that catalyst. Because, um, you know, I was reading about that about not not specifically about Pisces, but about how sometimes people refuse to take action, and then the world steps in, the universe steps in, and they and the universe will change some circumstance in your life, and yet it's even more lacking control because if you were to actually direct your action, then at least, you, you may not know the outcome, but at least you would be able to have some input into it. So I thought that was a very good observation because um, a lot of times people don't take action because they're thinking, but what, what, I don't know what will happen if I do that. And it's like, well, something's going to happen eventually. Um, if you feel uncomfortable about a certain situation, the chances are that Something will change at some point, but it won't be your directive. And so you'll have to just ex accept whatever comes. Okay, so this um, second one, this is from the, the Native Spirit deck. I think it is. Let me see. <clears throat> what is it? Owl Medicine. Yeah, I figured, I figured it meant this. Wisdom, illumination, intuition, clairvoyance, and deep insight abound. Go within. Profound mastery and grace is available to you simply by pulling your awareness inward. 
Ancient knowledge is emerging within you. You know the truth. Trust your perception. You are a truth seeker and a truth sharer. Nurture the feminine spirit within you. In some indigenous cultures, the men say that they're afraid of the owl because it represents the pow power of woman, and they're in awe and even afraid of the power of women. Other nature cultures call the owl the night eagle, for it has the majesty of the eagle but works silently in the darkness of night. In Western cultures, the owl sits on the shoulder of Athena and also of Merlin, revealing sacred truths. When this card chooses you, you are at the advent of a time of illumination and, transform and transformation. In a meditative state, imagine that you have shape-shifted <laughs> into an owl and you are soaring silently through the night. Your ability to see, even in the darkness, is remarkable. This corresponds with your ability to perceive the truth, even in murky situations in life. And of course, you know, Pisces is a very intuitive sign. But you know, it's, it's kind of funny because when I'm doing private readings, a lot of times by looking at people's charts, it seems to me that there are a lot of intuitives that are getting readings. And I'm thinking to myself, am I just saying this to practically everybody? But no, not not at all. It's because people that understand this about themselves are more uh, trusting in this kind of truth. And that's why they believe it's worthwhile to have a reading. But the only thing is that I say, I think to myself, well, they don't need a reading because they already have that intuition. But something obviously keeps people who are highly intuitive from being able to read their own situation properly. And it's probably subjectivity. So it's very important to get out of your story, to get out of what your past kind of has told you is true about yourself, and to be able to take that step back and look at your whatever your situation is from a more objective and less emotional point of view. But that is very difficult for a water sign because, you know, you are naturally approaching life from the perspective of your emotions and your memories and, and you know, like your feelings, how you connect to things. Um, and that that can be an energetic thing as well. Your feelings kind of dictate whether you like something, whether you don't, and um, it's very heightened for a Pisces person. But um, the more you, you can realize how wise you are and how intuitive you are, uh, the m more you are tuning into yourself and you're less needing other people to tell you something that you already know. And, um, and, I, and I do think that some people, they already know. They just want kind of a second opinion and it kind of helps them to feel that they're making the right decision or they have the right perception about a certain situation. So I shouldn't just characterize it as that they don't have any connection to intuitive, their intuitive faculties. Okay, so this one is Gaia Earth Connection and it says, be mindful of the planet, come back to Earth, stay grounded, perfect. Perfect for a Pisces person because um, you are very... Um, you're not you're not necessarily very grounded, and that is a broad brush. Some of you may be. You may have like. Uh, you may have some like maybe you have a moon in um, Taurus or something. Let's see what it says. Gaia is Mother Earth. She is the keeper of the light who holds the planet in her hands and heart. Her kiss on every animal's forehead. Her kiss is on every animal's forehead. She is the life that moves through the plants, the sweetness within the honey, and the force that encourages the bees to fly. She loves, protects, and guides all beings. She asks us to love them too. How can we help them? How can we help the planet? You're blessed to receive this great mother card today because it shows that the earth itself, through the image of Gaia, is protecting your path. Stay, um, you are 
a strong, focused, and loving individual. Stay grounded and don't allow your imagination, ego, or fears to run away with you. Ensure your choices are for the highest good. Gaia is also bringing her motherly love to you and encircling you in a cocoon of peace. If you have had troubles with a mother in your life or are feeling disconnected or from or grieving your own mother, Gaia helps revitalize that connection and will bring healing where it is possible. If you are a mother and are worrying about these duties, know that Gaia is thanking you for your hard work and commitment. The earth is blessed to have you. And I would say too, um, I belonged to a community garden for a couple of years. And one of the things that I did not expect, I'm talking about benefits, I didn't expect to gain from doing this, is that, you know, you've heard that expression, money doesn't grow on trees, but cucumbers grow on vines, right? And um, zucchini, I don't know if those are vines, I think they are, but like, I remember looking at a zucchini that was growing in my patch, and the next day I came back, and the thing was as big as a um, baseball bat, or die, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I began to see the abundance that is naturally present because a lot of us are disconnected from the food that we eat and if you grow your own food even on a small scale it becomes apparent to you that there is so much that is just there for the taking you know that life provides things to us we're so used to paying for everything and they're having to always be this exchange of money and stuff and you know seeing things growing wildly like that and tomatoes just like and and they tasting you know tasting so good it's it, it was really great in terms of me making that connection to financial abundance because it's like it makes you realize that there are no limits and um, it can just be effortless in a way. And you could just grow, grow, grow. And some of us were very like <laughs> locked into these concepts of, especially, you know, if you spent many years working for other people and they're like, okay, this is time for your salary review. Okay, this is how much money um, you can get a 1% raise, a 4% raise. And it's a little box. And when you see things just like abundant on, on vines and, and things like that, it's just like the sky is not the limit. The sky, is, the sky is limitless. And so make those connections that are kind of unlikely and, and, and make them with, with um, tangible things because you can see, I would even say too, just by taking care of the environment and, and honoring it, that we are, it's almost like putting money in the bank for a savings account, that we are kind of like ensuring that we are taken care of, if we take care of that which sustains us. So. Anyway, Pisces, I hope you enjoy this, and if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Have a wonderful rest of 2017. Bye.